welcome to the Startup Grind. The way this is going to work is we're going to go through a series of questions, have an interview, very fireside chat um, format. This is going to be awesome. I had an opportunity to talk to these two revolutionaries before hand and got a lot of information out of them. And the things that they're going to share with you tonight, I really want you to take heart to it and really listen to it because they're going to give you some keys and nuggets on how to be successful in the entrepreneurial ecosystem that's growing in this place that we call Tallahassee. Um, and so we're going to get into it. At the end of that, though, we're going to have a question to answer. So at the end, you will have the opportunity to ask them questions. So along the way, if you want to take some notes or think about some of the things that you want to ask them, that's going to be huge because there is a portion where we actually dedicate to questions and answers. Is that cool with everybody? Is that cool? All right. So I'm going to let these gentlemen go ahead and introduce themselves. You got David, you got Mike, and I'm going to let them tell a little bit about themselves and who they are before we get into it. David Lawson, uh, partner with Domi Ventures, and also I'm an entrepreneur. Just had my uh, seventh startup get launched. Uh, first contract yesterday. So this is That's good, Steph. Let me just before claps the net. First okay. contract, get money. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, I'm David and I'm an entrepreneur. Um, so <laughs> so uh, uh, I'm a transplant to Tallahassee. Uh, but I've spent a lot of my life in Virginia, so this is familiar territory. Uh, and a lot of what you're going to hear tonight is, frankly, uh, quite selfish. Um, my wife and kids are here. We want this town to be cooler, weirder, and uh, you know, more fun to be in. Uh, and I love hanging with fellow entrepreneurs. Great. Uh, Micah Wyden, CEO and partner with Domi Ventures. And uh, I, too, am a transplant, so selfishly uh, got into this because I wanted to see this here in Tallahassee. And and I'm a young serial entrepreneur, um, if, there's, if there's such a thing. This is going to be wild. You just had a birthday. I actually, I'm, 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 I'm headed that way. So, uh, But uh, no, I too just wanted to be surrounded by other entrepreneurs. And um, so I don't know that I'm revolutionary yet, but uh, maybe someday uh, I'll have a good story to tell. I've got some proof to um, their revolutionary chops. The fact that we're in this building right now, Domi Ventures, the Domi Station, was one of the most profound things that have happened in Tallahassee as it pertains to the startup community. I mean, it was, it was a benchmark. It was a flag being planted in the ground saying we're about to do something awesome. So that's where we're going to kind of get started. We're going to start talking about Domi Station, what it means to you, and why you feel it's important, and why you believe that we should have something like this here in the city of Tallahassee. Well. You know, I was actually surprised it wasn't already here. Uh, given FSU, FAMU, uh, TCC, uh, when I moved here, I just assumed there was one here. Um, in other parts of my life, I teach how you research companies. And one way you research companies is you research incubators. So I was like, well, I'll go down to the local place. Oh, there is not a local place. Um, so really, what, what you're looking at here is this you need a place in a community that is really a front door, and Tallahassee had no front door. Right. Yet, what I was seeing in Tallahassee was every piece of the puzzle, right? So you had a, a chamber that was doing things with entrepreneur, uh, you had boot camps, uh, you, you certainly had entrepreneurs. I mean, I was meeting people that were doing great things, mm -hmm. but there was no place to go. Mm -hmm. And so really the vision if you want to say what this is, is really a place so somebody can walk in that door, I'm an entrepreneur, what can Tallahassee do for me? Wow. Now I should say, we might tell you there's nothing for you in these four walls, that you need to go over to some other place, uh, like the wonderful maker space over at TCC. You know, we've got a 3D printers back here, but we're not going to be building huge things here, and that's, but that's cool. Uh, you might be doing some pharma kind of things. You might need a wet lab. Um, by the way, I do want to assure if the county, and thank you, county, again, for doing this, I want to assure the fireside chat, there is no fire here, okay? So just to, in case <laughs> they're worried. That's cold. I know, that's cold, right, in case they're worried that yeah, Domi There's put no a fire. fireplace uh, here. But, I was but, thinking about bringing a fire to it. Okay, I know, I I'm exactly. Just it, right. But really, that, at, it, at its core, mm -hmm. that's what you're looking at. Right here. Awesome. 
Uh, yeah, you know, for me, uh, having a place where the mentors, the investors, the folks that have been there, done that, or have some uh, great knowledge and, and experience can be there ready to give you advice. So for, for someone that moves into a community like Tallahassee, uh, it took me a year of working my butt off to go out late at nights to every kind of Thai uh, event I could to meet the right people and get connected. And I think limiting that to where you walk through a door and you can immediately get connected with the right people. And I think there's a difference between having a startup or running, wanting to run a small business to uh, you know, have an existing company wanting to move into the community. I think we can help uh, lead people in different directions, but we're specifically focused on startups um, and giving them the, 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 the knowledge they need right away when they walk through the door and even helping them find you know, a house and that kind of stuff. I mean, ultimately, we're creating a startup community of people that really want to grow their, their company here. And, um, and it's really a peer-to-peer, -to -peer too, as well. You know, I want to hang out with like-minded individuals that have great ideas. For example, one of our startups that's in here, ShopX, came from a late-night brainstorming session when I let people work out of here before we started. That came from just whiteboarding, hey, what's some creative ideas we could do on Google Glass? And we threw up a bunch of ideas, and that was the one that stuck. And now they have 1,000 users in the last two weeks. Um, and they got, uh, they got invited to be on, on uh, Glassware as one of the apps uh, for Google Glass. That's incredible. It's a great story. We need more of that. Um, it is awesome. Can we clap that up? Whenever, whenever y'all hear a win, whenever, if y'all go to a basketball game and there's a win, there's some claps. There should be some claps on that. That's awesome. That's a win. That's good stuff. There's, there's one thing that, that I really kind of want to hit on. You said that you were going to be selfish, but I'm going to go ahead and poke the, poke the um, bag here on this one. You actually have a startup, and you're actually working in an incubator that you, found, that you were the founder of, one of the founders of. That's kind of like having your cake and eating it, too. Oh, Explain yeah. the advantages to that. Oh yeah, I, my friend, <laughs> my friends give me a lot of a lot of trouble for that because I actually haven't had an office for ten years because uh, I sold my business ten years ago to a company in San Diego. Um, so for a long time I lived in a Marriott courtyard across the street from from their headquarters. So I'd been working out of my house and working with places, but I say, yeah, well, you know, the kind of the kind of office I'm looking for it needs to have a 27 foot bar. Um, <laughs> need, it looks need, like you got that. Need, yeah, got that. I need to have a couple of taps. I need to have excellent coffee. Thank you, Catalina. Um, and uh, yep, uh, yep, Catalina's yeah, in the Catalina. building. Yeah, Catalina. Catalina. Um, He's awesome. And uh, and pay it forward to uh, Grasslands Brewery, who will be uh, on the taps, uh, and uh, also they'll be opening up right behind us. So uh, you know that was sort of my prerequisite. I didn't actually think I could get that. But um, I, I got it. So, but I think as an entrepreneur, I'll, I'll say this. Um, all my other businesses were in the proverbial garage. Mm -hmm. Now, in my case, that was just some small desk. I started my first business when I was 19. Um, I was married. I had a kid. Uh, a few years later, I had another kid. And uh, there's a picture of me with the two kids there at a computer that you all can go visit in the Smithsonian. Um, and so, you know, those were, those were my coworkers, right? And I got to say, it's great. You know, I have a, I, my company is based on IBM Watson technology, so we've, you know, it's really global. I've got people all over the world, but it's very virtual. So this, being able to come in here and get that vibe mm -hmm. with folks is, I'm feeling it myself. Um, and it's already helped my business. There are times where I'll give some advice. And then I'll go, nah, I probably ought to take some of that, too. Mm -hmm. You know? Wow. I, it's <laughs> that's, that's for me. Yeah, right. Yeah, I was probably talking to myself there. So. And, Mike, I want to I hit on this with you because I can remember early days when you were first starting to envision the idea of what Domi could be. I remember it was, like, sketchy. You were kind of talking about different things and interviewing a bunch of people trying to really feel the pulse of the city. And one of the things that you really, really stressed was the power of co-working. So can you give me a little bit of insight about the power of co-working and how that all came together for you here at Domi? Yeah, you know, I think for me, the, the vision and uh, wanting to be in the environment comes from I've been in, in environments like this. Um, and actually, I have family members that have started. Um, I have a brother that started one in Raleigh, North Carolina, who I helped. Um, and I've been studying startup communities for a while. Got a friend that um, does a social entrepreneurship accelerator out in Boulder, Colorado, called Unreasonable Institute. It's amazing. You should check it out. Um, so anyway, so I've, I've known about these spaces, and I've worked in them. And uh, I love the idea of collaborative working. I hate being stuck in a cubicle or of an office, and uh, and you feel you know you feel like you're strapped. You feel like someone's um, you know has a, you have a straitjacket on. Um, so I like the ability to 
you know, in the middle of the afternoon to go have a quality conversation with someone working on something completely different. Mm -hmm. But yet there, there are similar things that you all have to go through. And as a startup company, you have to wear many hats. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea of collaboration and, and uh, you know, I might have an idea that, that uh, is really beneficial to your company or a resource and vice versa. And how do we share that? And also, you might have a mentor that I didn't think about or that you can make a connection to. Um, you know, ultimately, we want to help mitigate risk. And, um, and so I just love the environment. I love being around like-minded individuals. And, um, and I think we're starting to see it here with, um, with the group that we've, we've got in here already. So. I think that's a huge statement because right now all over the country, there's the big conversation about collaborative advantage versus competitive advantage. And I just believe that the co-working space really, really kind of opens the door to collaborative advantage. Do you guys feel that way or? Absolutely. And if you see a lot of corporations are moving into that, um, you know, a good case here locally, like Florida Blue Insurance, you go into their retail center, very collaborative space. Banks, you know, there's not the counter in front anymore. You walk around, who did that? Who revolutionized that? Apple. Um, their retail stores changed the game in retail space. And you're seeing that um, uh, throughout the, the different industries. So. I think that's great. We're seeing more and more collaboration. Um, but for startups, I think it's the most important because you need all those pieces in one place. And you need to create an environment that's, that's also fun because, um, and you know, getting to this later probably, but um, you know, the idea that, um, you know, ultimately the idea that uh, you have to wear many hats. So it's very stressful. You know, a lot of startup uh, think that you're going to come in and it's, it's the Facebook, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the next Facebook. I'm going to be a billionaire. And it's, well, what a great lifestyle. It's 80 hours a week, it never turns off. You come up with, you know, and if you already came up with one idea, you have five others that you, you have in the back of your ear, like, oh, I really want to start that. <laughs> um, you know, you need to hone in and focus, and you have to wear all those different hats. So being in an environment like this, you can unleash as well. Okay. And I want to talk about a little bit about Tallahassee as a whole, because you planted it strategically here in Tallahassee. And we talked a little bit about the different advantages that Tallahassee brings to the table. You guys are pretty passionate about that. Well, I don't, I, I, no, I, well, first off, I would say this was not a strategic move. Okay. Um, both of us love, um, you know, uh, my wife uh, is a native, uh, which, well, grew up in Bainbridge, which people who know this area, that's the native. Okay. And then uh, for Micah, his wife <laughs> is, is getting area. her uh, her PhD at FSU. Okay. Um, so, about so you know, I love it now. I'm glad it happened. <laughs> but um, if you had said, where do you want to go strategically as an entrepreneur, no offense, but I would not have chosen Tallahassee. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. What our job is, is now to make it so it would be a strategic choice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've you know, thanks for reminding me, but you know, I have gray hairs and I've been around a while. So I was, <laughs> you know, I was in Austin um, you know, before it's what it is today. Okay. And it was in Nashville before it, it's what it is today. We have the pieces here, okay? If we all come together, Tallahassee can get closer than you realize because we have some amazing geographic advantages. Here we go. Have you ever been to Austin? Oh, yeah. You're not so. 60 miles from the Gulf of Mexico, okay? Mm -hmm. You're in the middle of nowhere. And no offense to my friends in Austin, and I do have good friends in Austin, but you know what? If Austin wasn't so cool, you wouldn't go there. Mm -hmm. All right? <laughs> um, and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Whereas there are a lot of people, once you have a family, people have been coming here forever. I mean, this is a fantastic place. The problem is it hasn't been a good place for people in their 20s. So they would graduate and go, I got to go someplace cool. They'd have kids and they'd come back. We're trying to bridge that gap to try to help them see that there are resources here. Mm -hmm. But another part of that is having, like you see this in this All Saints area. Mm -hmm. This All Saints area, this is our Austin. Mm -hmm. Make no mistake about it. It's not Midtown. It's not even College Town. It's right here. It's where the graffiti's on the wall. It's the arts. That's the place. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And if we, can, if we can make this work, mm -hmm. so 20-somethings go, you know what, I can, I can do this. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I like this town. Yeah. I don't need to leave. And they have our resources. Then we'll get them through their 20s, and then we got them nailed for life. <laughs> okay. And that's, you know, something great about being in Tallahassee is the simple fact that, you know, it's the state capital. You have, all of the, you have a lot of important players in this area to help um, uh, hit the growth faster than another city would. So I would say... We are in a good location for it because mm -hmm. we have two, univers two universities and other, you know, community college, some other little colleges. Um, 
But that's what you need. I mean, ultimately, to create a startup community, you need to have the leaders who are the entrepreneurs that are leading the, the fight, and they're ultimately going to be there for the long run. And they want to see it happen in their community. And then you've got to have the, the feeders, which are the universities and that kind of thing, um, to also um, add, add and be the driving growth um, for the future. So I think it's a perfect location for something to happen. Um, case in point, we started, um, what, in August um, of last year. And we've this quickly been able to put this together. That's pretty impressive. And um, as you see behind me, the public and private partnerships that we've been able to, to do with Leon County and Florida Blue and a lot of private companies. Um, that just goes to show the, the community we live in, the people that were already here, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which, is, which is amazing. Yeah, and that's why I kind of mentioned like the strategic advantage too, because there are things here in Tallahassee Absolutely. that lower the barrier of entry for a startup that a lot of people just don't realize. And I think that you guys are gonna make the noise to get people to say, wait a minute, that makes a lot of well, sense. Well, and that, that's it. The, the, the advantages were here, but no one knew about them. There we go. And, but there's also something else you can't miss. FSU needed to make some strategic changes too. Okay. They now want to be the entrepreneur university. They didn't used to want to be the entrepreneur university. Right, right. All right. Um, FAMU's new president, number one thing she talked about was commercialization mm -hmm. of faculty IP. TCC has already made investments, as, as you know, in local incubators. Uh, you know, they're they're things that they're doing. They're the ones doing the makerspace. You know, mm -hmm. over there. So those changes had to happen. Had we come here mm -hmm. earlier, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it, we're, in many ways, Domi is a lesson for entrepreneurs because it's about who you, the people coming together, but also coming together at a right time. Mm. You can have the right team and be ahead of the curve too much. You can be behind the curve. There are a lot of pieces that have to come together. So, you know, one of the things I always I want to give a big shout out to are all the people who tried and failed. Mm, yeah. to do this um, because when I told um, our friends in town about this they went oh that idea has been tried for 20 years it'll never work here in Tallahassee <laughs> and believe me when they yeah. come now to visit here in Domi first off they can't believe that they're in the All Saints area having a fun time and they didn't realize voodoo dogs up there and Merv's milk shop and they're like where when did this happen so <laughs> just exposing you know locals to it so, you know, thank you to people like, you know, Steve Evans, who's, you know, been at Tally Grill, yep, yep. you know, all these years, Larry Lynch, um, all these people who were really the pioneers. They're the Davy Crockett's, you know. We're the next line. I've been them. I've been them. And I've failed being them, right? Mm -hmm. And so whatever we do is on their shoulders. And fortunately, they're still here and they're actually some big supporters. So rather than sort of going, well, how's it working for you and not for me? They're like, this is great. This is what we've wanted. And that's one thing I love about this community. It's coming together mm -hmm. in a way that, because you know, when this kind of thing happens, it disrupts, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, wow, the pat, you know, what's going on here? I'm not feeling that. People are like, this is great. Wow. How can I help? Wow, can we clap that up? That is awesome. That's, cause that's huge, that's huge business right there. I don't think you understand, that is huge. One thing that I always talk about and I rant and rave about Tallahassee is just that, the cohesiveness of it and how people really want to do awesome stuff here. So if you jump out there as a, a trailblazer and you try to do something awesome, you're going to have some supporters, you're going to have some cheerleaders and you can't. One word that you used a little bit earlier, and I want to kind of go into this a little bit, is feeders. How many people in this room know what a feeder is? Raise your hand. You know. A lot of people don't know what a feeder is, but there's another word that goes with this. There's the leaders and the feeders. Can you tell us the leader and feeder dynamics of Tallahassee and why you think that's important? Yeah, so if you, uh, if you think about like a car, right? So you've got the, you know, the structure up top, then you've got the wheels. I think of them as, you know, you have your leaders and you have your feeders. And ultimately the leaders are the entrepreneurs, the folks that are working on companies that are already existing in the community that are entrepreneurs, that have had success stories and what have you, that are going to be here for a long term. They're going to be here for the next 20, 25 years. That, can see the goal through. Um, and then and you've got your feeders, which are the universities, your private companies, um, the other public institutions uh, that can help to provide those other pieces you need. So for example, Leon County providing space at a reduced rate to something like us, helping with press, helping make connections, um, that kind of thing, getting behind the, you know, being behind the driving force. And then you've got like the universities. Um, you know, it's not just the university relationship for talent, so really, that's a small piece of it, and that's great. You know, in the future, we don't want to have to rely necessarily on the university for all the talent, right? We want to attract people in here. We want to keep people 
um, and what have you, but really what that helps is bringing in alumni that want to give back. Wow, that's going on in Tallahassee right now. I would have loved if that was going on when I was a student. Um, you know, I've done this, this, and this. I'd love to give back. We're already getting calls from development officers from the university um, that are bringing their clients through because they've heard of what's going on and they want to give back. That's what we need. We need more people from the university that can give back time as well. Um, and you know, it's, it's a give first mentality. Um, so those leaders and feeders are giving their time in an effort that, hey, we'll build this together. In the long run, you know, things will come back, you know, uh, things will be back, come back my way. And, and uh, so that's kind of the, you know, the whole cycle of it. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's huge. Because I think all those parts working together is really what's gonna make Tallahassee um, become the entrepreneurial ecosystem that we're trying to build. So it's really awesome that you guys are standing in that gap and making sure that it happens. I want to talk a little bit about, because we're talking about entrepreneurs, and you guys have now been charged with the idea of being the curators, if you call it that, of the entrepreneurial community, the entrepreneurs that are actually coming. But there's a mindset, and there's a, there's a, a theory and a thinking that comes with these entrepreneurs. Can we talk a little bit about that, the mindset of the entrepreneur, what it should be, what it is, what you guys have kind of noticed, and where can we actually make improvements, or do we just leave things the way they are? Yeah, that, well, one of the things to keep in mind, um, you know, thanks to TV and everything, people <laughs> think of uh, the Shark Tank. Um, we are, this is not a Shark Tank. This is, we call it the guppy tank, okay? <laughs> um, we cannot afford to take a, a venture capital mentality where mm -hmm. you really, how can I say no? That's essentially what they're doing. They're looking for the no. We look for the yes. So we might take a very strong individual with a weak idea or a strong idea with a weak individual, okay? Whereas in the VC world, they'd go, you know what, I'm gonna dump you for either of those reasons. Um, so I think that that's an important mm -hmm. aspect of, of philosophically where we're mm -hmm. going, which is mm -hmm. a little different than some more mature communities, which might take a little different tack. Mm -hmm. um, I actually believe in this day and age, everyone needs to get a little more on this bus anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because what's about to happen with crowdfunding to be able to raise money by selling equity with crowdfunding is gonna be incredibly disruptive mm -hmm. to how capital is raised in this country. Yeah. And so all of the folks that invest, you know, it used to be you had to go out to California. You know, if you were Bill Gates, you were Steve Jobs, there was, you had to go you know, down the road to say, you know, there were six VCs I have to see. You can actually have a very successful company and never go to California. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's be frank, that's freaking out a lot of people because <laughs> that's disruptive. And the idea that the public could support, because one of the things we need here in Tallahassee is there's a lot of money in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. Especially when you look at Tallahassee Metro and you start thinking Quincy and Thomasville and you start, start drawing that circle, you go down to Seaside, you know, a couple of, couple of dollars down there. Um, those people are investing every day in things that are not here. Mm. And we need them to park some of that money here. But I understand why their money's left because they didn't feel like anyone was, was curating. Right. So they probably put some money in a student project and it failed and they're like, well, that didn't work. So we want to build up that confidence to get that local money in here, as well as bring money from the outside. But I actually think there's plenty of money here. It's just not being spent here or invested here. Right. The last thing, I'll, I'll, I'll make one quick comment about mindset, and I think it's the, be patient. Um, number one, you're not going to get funded right away. Um, you know, you, that's the hardest thing to do um, is to find the right investment. But, um, but also, you know, really having the mindset that um, we are at the beginning stages of trying to create a startup community. So don't be unrealistic in what resources are available. You need to reach out to people so that we can get those resources and we can connect you with the right people. But if you don't talk about it and you just expect it's going to be there, um, then we'll never know to change something. So reach out to those people that are doing things. And, uh, and if you have needs, um, Let's help get them there, but but um, you know we're open you know to ideas, and it's very inclusive in that. So um, just come to us with ideas and things that you have, and, and we can help push to to make those connections. So. I th I think one of the things that all entrepreneurs need to be aware of 
because you know you have movies like Social Network and and you you know now TV shows about it and everything. Um, so I want to be an entrepreneur as though it's like an actor on the stage. Um, you know, being an entrepreneur is is hard. Right. Uh, raising capital is hard. Uh, meeting payroll is hard. And I think one, if I had to look at, if I look at my first company versus this company, mm -hmm. my first company, I spent a lot of money for very little technology. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm not spending much of any money and I have access to the most amazing technology on the planet. So I'm on the field quicker. But you know what, what did I do as soon as I land my contract? I'm dealing with liability insurance, right? I'm dealing with the, the you know, onboarding cost and all the things that guess what? That's really not any easier than it was 25 years ago. Wow. And you know, I, I, so when I look at an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur tells me I've got this idea and I, you know, I've already built this and I think I'm gonna give it away. I'm like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> well, it just well, it didn't cost me anything to do. And I said, you know, I've spent, you know, 500 hours of my life and maybe I've expended 1,000 hours of my friends and my parents' credit cards or whatever. But, you know, hey, it's free. And I'm like, well, guess what? That's the easy part of the ride. Okay. And so I think that that's, you know, when you ask me what I, what I want to see is a realism. Okay. That, you know, and so you have to be careful as a mentor because mm -hmm. I don't want to rain on your parade. But I'm going to put some mist in there, okay? And I and I and I'm going to I'm going to you know have a few thunder boomers go and just say you know just understand because you know the first mentor I had, which was an accidental, he said to me, you know, Dave, remember, most entrepreneurs hit the wall smiling, mm. and that was a year before my first business failed, and he was trying to warn me, you know, mm -hmm. but I didn't listen. Because I thought everything was great. Yeah. But you know what? He was listening to what I said, and I had a fundamental flaw, even though it was a million dollar business, but it cost me a million and more to run it. Mm. And he was trying to get me to make a change in my business, pivot, right? Which I ultimately did 10 years later to found my next business. But at that moment, I didn't listen. And that's the, the warning I would give to everybody who starts a business you know, listen. Doesn't mean we're all right. God, Mike and I are not always, but try for a moment. Imagine if that person giving you advice was right. Imagine that world and then argue against it, but don't look at a nace, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I think there's a myth that the entrepreneur gets through that hits the wall mm -hmm. by being bullheaded. You know what I did the next time? I knew where the wall was. Sometimes they call it the chasm. I knew it. And man, I just went right around it. I set it up because I went from a million dollars to $3 million as fast as humanly possible. Wow. Because that's what I knew was that was where that trap was. Mm -hmm. So that's... Wow. That's power. Can we clap that up? That, right, that was like a big chunk of wisdom. I don't know about y'all, but I'm like stuck. I didn't even have no more questions. I'm like, give it to me. That was awesome. That is so awesome because something that you mentioned when we were doing, you know, when we were talking before the, the interview is, you know, the age old problems and how they do show themselves back up. Like you may, you may have got to the game fast. You may have scaled quickly, but those old problems are not going away. Like you talked about liability insurance. This is still business. This is like the, the business of business. Talk about those, those age old things that pop up and how they can actually damage or how they can actually hinder a, a entrepreneur's um, um, traction? Onboarding cost. Mm -hmm. You don't know how much it's gonna cost you to bring up a client on board, then you don't know your business. Wow. Um, if, you're, if you're gonna tell me you have to physically go see them, like I do, people wanna see the whites of my eyes, because my, my contracts can be a quarter of a million dollars over a number of years, so they're gonna wanna see me. Mm -hmm. Well, that means I have to fly somewhere, there's a process, there's contracting, whereas if I just have to download an app, but, if, but am I then going to have customer support? Wow. Does that support have to be human? Can I use Zendesk? You've got to really tell me what's it going to cost for each one of those clients to come on board. Mm. And then you've got to tell me how long are they going to stay around. Right. Because a lot of people say, you know, I'm losing money, but I'll, take it, I'll make it up on volume. Mm. And, you know, that, <laughs> it, no, you won't. Up. No, you won't. I'll just keep doing more of the same. And, and, and people, but it's amazing 
as much as we saw the dot bomb, we saw all that, I can't believe that I still hear it. You know, but I understand that for that entrepreneur, it's new to them. Right. And, and I was there. I mean, I want to be clear. When I was in my 20s, I didn't listen. Mm -hmm. I didn't listen. I mean, I, you know, I, I was that person because I was driven. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, and, I, and I was successful because mm -hmm. this is one other thing I'll throw out and a little out of line here, you know, or out of the sequence. But here's another thing. <laughs> don't ever lead with how much money you've raised. I don't care how much money you've raised. How much have you sold? Mm. That is the number one thing I want to hear from you because way too many entrepreneurs, oh, I raised 10 million in my last round. So what? What are you? you you're not a VC. You're an entrepreneur. You're I want, I, I, you know, <laughs> but, but they, they're like, that's cool. That's on my resume. And you hear this like fail fast. Don't ever say that to an investor, okay? <laughs> We're gonna you, fail you, you ever walk into a bank, I need that money and I'm planning to lose it really quickly. <laughs> and I'm gonna learn a lot. I'm like, you know, you, you, <laughs> but, but, that's, but that's the mentality, that's what I worry, kind of the rock star, mm -hmm. entrepreneur kind of thing, as though that's it. I mean, look, Mark Zuckerberg is probably one of the hardest working people on the planet. Watch the part of the movie where they're in that little house, and I know you all look at the beer and the drunken stuff, but those guys are banging code for weeks on end. Mm. That's where that thing happened. That was hard stuff. He had a million ways to fail. Wow. Million ways to fail. So that's, you know, kind of in your mind when you're thinking about this, that's where it is. And then you'll have your moment where you get to get up and you get to be that entrepreneur, Steve Jobs, you know, announcing the iPhone. That's the moment you want. But Steve also was sitting in the glass factory showing them how to build, make glass they had never made before. Right. That, nobody saw that. Right, right. The stuff that happens behind the scenes. And, and, and that's a lot. Now, now <clears throat> I want to say, if you're a true entrepreneur, you love it. Mm -hmm. I'm on my Thank seventh you. venture. I live for that. Wow. I live, I live for the problem. I, I live wow. for someone to tell me, you can't do that. You can't, and I'm like, then I am, I am redoubling my effort to prove, <laughs> to prove <laughs> you wrong. To the, the, the best thing that ever happened for Domi Station was we were told by so many people you could never do it. Wow. You tell four, four entrepreneurs they can't do something, it's a dangerous game. Yeah, because you got four entrepreneurs, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're telling four of them you can't yeah. do it. So that leads me to another question, and this is something that you hit on, Micah, as far as ideas. You know I'm an idea guy. But you were talking about there's a lot of ideas and there's a saturation of ideas. So we're going to talk about two things here. One is the saturation of, of things that we can do, but a lack of focus. And also there's ideas, but the execution component is the most important. So let's talk about ideas and execution, then we'll talk about saturation and focus. So ideas in general, um, I think right now, because we're able to have a startup community in Tallahassee and work from anywhere, that there are a lot of options. There are a lot of things never before, I think. Um, you can create a company and create it very quickly, and, but it's like, what idea do you stick with? And if you're an idea person, you have millions. Um, and how do you focus down on those ideas? And how do you know that, you know, so many out there, how do you know what, which one to go for? And so, you know, I think you need to have it in your head or have someone on your team to know when it's time to change in a different direction. Number one, it takes passion to be in that idea. And ultimately, when you get down to doing accounting and you hate accounting or you're, you know, doing cold calls and you hate sales, sorry, you have to do that. So if you don't like what you're selling after, you know, if you look down five years down the road and you're still doing it and you're, man, why did I do that? You've wasted those five years. You could have made a different change. Um, so number one, you know, I think you need to have passion within your idea. And I think you need to think uh, about the barrier to entry. You know, like stop trying to recreate the next Facebook. You know, like think about being disruptive in a different industry. Um, I'll bring up a really good example about ideas right now. Um, anybody familiar with relay rides? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so anyone else? Raise relay your rides? hand if you're familiar. What's, what's the name of the company? Relay rides. Relay rides. Anybody know about relay rides? He knows about it. Anybody else? Okay. He's about to test that. Relay Rides is a car sharing program. It's a, they're they're uh, disrupting the rental car business. It's a car sharing where you can rent out your own car. Well, their model, they started out with short-term rentals. Well, now they've pivoted in a completely different area. Very brilliant. Uh, they're launching it in San Francisco right now. They've bought uh, space 
you can go and park your car for free when you go to the airport on a trip. They'll rent your car while you're gone, um, and you get paid from that as well as getting free space to, to park your car. Um, you know, that's a great concept. If they had a great idea, and they've been floating, and it kind of with the onboarding costs, they realized that those short-term rentals and what their model was, was not really going to take them to the next level. They were making okay money, but they're really not um, you know, scaling to the level they want to. Um, so they're changing their whole model, and they're, dis they're completely disrupting the rental car business, which is a great thing. I've worked in that industry, and it needs it. Um, <laughs> so think about that. You know, I think you know, an industry that's, that's not, that hasn't been disrupt disrupted enough is the fashion industry and the retail space uh, even more. Uh, you know, obviously, wearable tech, there's a lot of things going on, but uh, I think there's a huge need. So think about your idea. Do the market research to do that. And then the other question about ideas was... Uh, you have ideas, and well, saturation and focus, and then ideas and execution. Yep. And then, um, uh, you know, then to execute idea, you could be a really good idea person. Myself, I'm really good at ideas. And I know how to build teams to execute on those ideas. And that's what you need. You need to know who you are. So if you're the big picture thinker and you're a strategist, that's great. Keep that role. But bring in someone that can execute on your ideas to take it to the level it needs to go. Um, you know, I love starting companies, and I know that I'll get bored with one company for too long. Because I love being a serial entrepreneur. I think it's 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 a lot of fun. But I'm also, you know, I I, I see my success as if I built a successful company that's going to last for a long period of time, and that means I need to build the right team to take it to that level. So it even comes down to like you know partnership that we created for Domi. I knew each one of them brought a certain skill that I didn't have uh, to build, and and, you know, and I think you need to know who you are. If you want to be the operations person or the technologist, we well, need to go find someone that's a business person that can make the sales calls. Because you need to be out there talking to customers. And if you can't do it, sorry, you're never going to grow your business. Um, so I think that's really important. The execution, there's tons of ideas out there, but if you can't execute, you're never going to, it's never going to happen. Take in case in point again, like Apple, without Steve Jobs to execute on those great ideas. And he was a, you know, brilliant, he had both. It was pretty incredible. But. Well, I think the other thing, you know, back to the team, uh, I actually think the number one movie for all entrepreneurs to watch is the Muppet movie. Mm, okay. That is because all yeah. that all that is about is Jim Henson getting the Muppets and it has a bus and everybody has their personality and it's distinct and it fits in with a group but that movie is all about entrepreneurship and for those that I see that try to for instance I'll have entrepreneurs who go you know, well, they're, you know, I, they don't have my passion. Good, 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 because we don't need two of you in the same room. Or, you know, <laughs> you know he, he doesn't know, you know, JavaScript. Wonderful. You know what? You're geeky enough for all of us. I need someone who can sell this stuff, okay? Right, right. Um, that's, but that's hard because you think that, if, you know, and I always, I'll meet these entrepreneurs, and, and to be clear, whenever I say anything negative, I've been that person, right? I, I, my first company, I thought, if I just had a duplicator of me, mm -hmm. then that would be great. And I realized as time went on, I don't scale, right? <laughs> and so I, you know, the real, as I built especially my, my most successful company, I had very different people. Mm -hmm. And there were times where that, that was the hard. I mean, I had to have like group therapy <laughs> at one point, about halfway through, because people, you know, because you, you know, well, you did this to me. It becomes very much like family. I mean, just to understand as you build your team and all that. But I think that's the other thing, being able to build that team, understanding mm -hmm. what you're missing, mm -hmm. who you're not, what Micah said. Mm -hmm. And that's not a weakness. That's strength. That's if strength. somebody says to me, I can't sell, thrilling, you know that. Let's go find you a salesperson or I can't code. I can design, I'm kind of a mediocre coder, let's go get you a rock star coder. Mm -hmm. But when I have somebody who goes, well, if I had enough time, I'd do it all, but I guess I have to hire some people because I don't have enough time, you're gonna be terrible because you're gonna make everyone feel like that. I mean, can you imagine you're on the bus yeah. and it's yeah. like, you know what, you're only on this bus because I don't have enough time to do your job too. Wow. That's wow. not motivating, wow. guys. Right. That is not leadership. You know, yeah. Steve Jobs found the best of each of his pieces. You know, Micah, this place is not this cool without really Micah in here and our wonderful architect, and then Jake uh, Kiker, our, uh, also, by the way, a lawyer. Yes, always have a lawyer on the team. Um, <laughs> always have legal. You know, John Vecchio and, and I had nothing to do with this. 
in terms of how this looks. This is not, I mean, we're thrilled with it. You know, although I think I did give you the thing, let's get that bar in here. I think I did give you that. Uh, <laughs> I, yes, Make but, sure there's a bar. But other than that, yeah. I, <laughs> it used to be bigger, but uh, that's actually mine from a failed uh, wine bar. So don't go into business with your family. There again lies the team. <laughs> you said there, you said there go lies the team. Too many like-minded individuals, and I stepped out, and I think it's my team. But yeah, you know, the other thing about teams, too, real quickly, is... Mm -hmm. Don't lie to the other people that you're getting on a team with, because that stuff is going to come out. If you come on saying, oh, yeah, I'm, I can do sales, I can do this, and you come on, that's going to come out very quickly that you can't do it. And then, <laughs> uh, and then you know, being the CEO, don't be, don't be afraid to be stingent on finding those team members. Fire them. Don't, don't, don't start an equity deal with a partner before you've tested them out for a while. You know, run little 30-day tests to find a developer. If you don't know development, to bring in a CTO and like, test them a little bit. There are resources out there that you can talk to the right people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those, those beginning mistakes that you make can change the trajectory of where you go. Um, and that's, therein lies why we're here, to, to mitigate that risk so you don't make some of those mm -hmm. decisions we've made. I know. Well, I, lo I love that Zappos, at the end of your training, offers you a check to leave. Wow. Yeah, wow. after they've okay. trained you, hey, in case this isn't what you thought, here's a severance pack, uh, check. Yep. And it's brilliant, because how many of you have gone through a training and go, this sucks, but I'm, I'm going to wait till my next job, right? I get a job offer. They'd rather get rid of you, because they don't want you on the phone at Zappos sounding like you don't want to be there. Wow. Because, by the way, it comes through. When you're unhappy, you might think that you're sort of going around, nobody sees how unhappy, we all see how unhappy you are. You guys aren't familiar with Zappos too, best customer service model you could find. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. All right. absolutely. Most of you should, but. That's a shout out to Zappos, you, we're on the camera. Yeah. Shout out to Zappos. We, have, we, have we like you Zappos. Here. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. exactly. You see right. that Zappos? Right, there you go. Saving that for that. <laughs> I had to, I had to throw in a plug there. My wife's a I'm a salesman, shopper. so. Yeah. There you go, that is awesome. I love Zappos, by the way. But team, <laughs> team is a huge, huge topic that has come up in pretty much every startup run. It really, really has. And so I don't want to leave this, this place about team because I think too often we surround ourselves with people that we like. We don't really vet them out. Sometimes we bring on team members that aren't going to contribute the things that we actually need, but the things we'd want them to, to give us, right? All this hopeful wishing for teams. And so you guys have a philosophy and, 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 and an ideology that really talks about teams and mentorship, which I thought was really phenomenal. And I think that's part of the magic of what Domi's all about, is really bringing in mentorship to actually nurture teams. Can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so no, you know, I think you have to have, um, whether you're looking for a mentor or an investor, those, those folks that have domain knowledge, you know, they, they really know the industry. They've been successful in that. You know, whether you're um, you know, getting in the retail space or what have you, someone that's been there, and had the success. You know, you don't want to go and raise money from an investor that you know is just a doctor, and you know, and you're doing, um, you know, food or something. You know, if they don't have that knowledge, why are you bringing them in? So similar with mentors, and this is what we're focused on, is bringing those folks in that we can connect, um, that have been there, have had those stories, both failures and successes, um, that can kind of help to guide those those individuals. Um, I think it's extremely important. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, the mentor community, that's, and, and call out, shout out to all the mentors, um, both that are physically here in Tallahassee, mm -hmm. but thanks to virtual, the virtual world, um, we'd love to pipe some of those folks in. Wow. Cool. Um, you know, via video, uh, because we need them. We, we had one, uh, not going to name any names, but we had a startup that, you know, we got them in touch with some people that knew what they were talking about and really, I think, may have saved them perhaps even you know, a trip to jail, you mm. know, um, and, That's pretty awesome. and yeah, yeah, because, you know, I <laughs> mean, there, I mean, part of, part of the challenge today is that, you know, you can build anything. Right. Um, and, but it doesn't mean what you're building is going to make it through regulatory compliance. Mm -hmm. Uh, just cause you can, you know, you think about it, a hack, right. And a hackathon. So I kind of hacked my way into that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. You know, you just saw the Supreme Court rule that you can't uh, live stream. Wow. Right? Okay, well, you know, that, hey, I got this great business. I mean, they had raised $100 million for that mm. business. And the Supreme Court said, mm, sorry, there's something called copyrights. And so I think that that's part of what we try to do is not necessarily a full-time mentor, but sometimes right. it's just 
here's an expert. Talk to them. Kind of come out of the shadows and, because one problem a mentor has is if we keep delivering bad news, okay. they'll, they'll clam up, like, I don't want to talk to you because you are raining on my parade. Right. So one of the things we try to do is kind of spread that around, even among the four of us at mm -hmm. times, so that we're not the only one, we're not trying to be a downer. Right. I mean, you wouldn't be here if we didn't believe in you. Right. I mean, understand that. You know, if you're in Domi, there's something about you that we believe in. But we believe in you enough to care enough to, you know, at times maybe keep you out of jail. And leading to the, you know, back to the team, you know, there's no way if an uh, entrepreneur comes to me tomorrow with needs advice about big data that I'm going to even start to talk to him. I have no idea about big data. That's why I have him. You know, or software, you know, I ultimately have a guy that really knows software, legal. Don't use legal Zoom. Like, go to a true attorney that can give you advice, but there are people <laughs> out there that will work and help you um, and not charge you $450 an hour. I mean, they really are. Um, but, you know, and then that, that leads to, you know, people that you bring onto your team. If you've never worked in the rental car business, don't go start a rental car company. Bring, unless you have someone on your team that's been there and worked in that industry and has insight <clears> in that industry, even if you do bring on a mentor that understands it, you have to like live that space. You know, like we gave advice to the guy that started in the brewery across the street, Grasslands. You should go and work for a brewery for a little bit. You know, similarly the um, confectionery Wes. Uh, you know, he went and studied under someone that that knew how to to do the organic uh, candy that he's developing. Rayleigh Confectioners for everyone out there. I just it's, got uh, some today. It's amazing. Yeah. It's in the Whole Foods. Oh, so good. I'm going to try it, but, uh, good, awesome stuff. but go Dude. and learn under someone that, like, if, you, if you're really passionate about something, then go and learn or ask someone to you know, be in that environment. Understand it more um, before you decide to, to get on it. Unless, you know, you have, again, you have someone on your team that, that has that knowledge. Okay. I think that's another just, you know, mm -hmm. segue here was, you know, we just talked about a brewery and candy. This is something else that's going on in real time. Manufacturing is coming back. To wow. the U.S. Wow. Okay. Wow. That is huge. Um, okay. When I graduated from high school, you know, it was more kind of in the born in the USA kind of vibe. You know, where I'll tell you it was factories closing down. Life is bad. <laughs> Life was good for Bruce Springsteen, not so good for everybody else. And so you weren't talking about making anything here. We are talking about making stuff. So one of the things about Domi that we definitely want to make sure yeah, we want your cool app and we're still wow. into all that. Mm -hmm. But we're also taking on folks that are doing things that are more traditional. Right. Like the retail, manufacturing, that yes. sort of thing. Yes. Last year, 3% of all <clears throat> VC money went into manufacturing. Doesn't sound like much, except before it was zero. Right. Okay. Because cost of energy, you know, shipping, all those things are changing. This thing with the Panama Canal mm -hmm. being enlarged and how that's going to change the ports in Florida. Uh, I forget, what is the guy? There's a guy, I love his title, he's a near futurist. Mm. I love that. I love that. Because he didn't make any money as a futurist because everyone went, I don't need to worry about the future. But if it's a near future. <laughs> and, Speak, but, 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 I'm but, near future, like but, three but, weeks from now. It, it's, it's, you know, it's brilliant. And so what it is, <laughs> Six is... Months. All these things have happened, and here's how they're going to coalesce to come together. You know, there is no iPod without Napster. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that had to happen. Also, record sales had to start to tank. Yeah. Yep. Okay? A lot of things had to come together for the iPod and iTunes and all those things to happen. Mm -hmm. And what Steve Jobs did was he saw mm -hmm. the near future mm -hmm. when he saw Napster. And he said, I'm going to be there at the moment yeah. that that switch goes on. That's part of your job as an entrepreneur is not so much to think of things that aren't, but think more the, in, the way I've used it over the years is I call it Reese's, you know, the chocolate and the peanut butter. What is something if I put that together with that, with that, and now it's, new, it's something new by that combination. So that's something I, I just put out there. So what's a near future? This fact that manufacturing, what's that going to mean? if we start having some manufacturers around here, and then mm -hmm. that means you got logistics, you got mm -hmm. transportation. What are all the things wow. that start to happen yep. as that changes? Those are your entrepreneurial ideas. Mm -hmm. And I think that to kind of piggyback on that, because even in our camp, when we talk about um, business and the emergence of new entrepreneurs, that is so true. The renaissance of, of craftsmanship, people putting their hands on stuff again, 
is really, really coming back because I think people or consumers are looking for that intimate experience again. There's a few things that I've purchased in just the last year that I'm like, that's old school and I love it. You know, and I got it for that reason. Dodo case was a huge example. How many people are familiar with Dodo case? The handmade cases for your iPad? That was revolutionary for me. I'm like, they just went back to the old school um, and made it with their hands. And there was something special about that. And I think they were looking for that as a people as a whole. So that was very profound in what you're saying. Well, and I agree with you, but I'll throw out a little wrinkle in there. You know, there's something called 3D printing. Oh, okay? yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and where that's all heading uh, is going to change Absolutely. how products, even cool brand new products, mm -hmm. are delivered to us. Mm -hmm. And we're just seeing a little glimpse mm -hmm. of that. And, and as all new ideas, when mm -hmm. they come on board, they're always toys. Right. Always toys. And that's why people dismiss them. Mm -hmm. But that's, that toy of today will be the future manufacturing facilities right. of tomorrow. And that's why wow. we've got some 3D printers yeah. back here. And we've got our guy, Thomas. And you know, we're definitely investing some, some, uh, yeah. some time in mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Even though people will look at it and go, yeah, but it's not this. It's like when the iPod came along. You know what some of the first reaction was? The music doesn't sound as good. <laughs> really? Nobody said, well, I could put 10,000 songs in my pocket. Yeah. It was the, they were asking the wrong question. And that's classic. So they'll look at a 3D printer and go, but it can't do this. <laughs> yeah, but it can do this. Right. And that's where you as an entrepreneur have to be able to see that thing and then be able to time it when the population yeah. is ready. So things like this car sharing, like, I mean, think mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. I'm going to let some stranger take my car? Right. I mean, I mean, let me go in a time machine and tell people about that. I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, I'm actually securing my car more. But that's because of the share economy mm -hmm. and the fact that we're not hearing all these stories about everybody getting robbed and all these different things. So we're starting to go, well, maybe I will make money on my couch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that is an idea mm -hmm. that if you go back 10 years, mm -hmm. doesn't work. Right. But now it does. Right. Right. I think the big, the profound pivot in what you're saying is, how many people in this room are entrepreneurs like legit, like you're starting a business like now or thinking about one? Raise your hand. Okay. How many idea makers do I have in the room? People who come up with like ideas, the ones that you sit around and you come up with ideas. Here's the big piece of this, and this is the part that we talk about a lot, is a lot of people think instantly that I have to make some form of technology an app. That's the only way I'm going to scale. I need to make an app. Right. But what about that really cool idea that you have to, let's, let's say, make something as novel as a toy that's really super, super cool that now 3D printing can help you make in a more efficient way and you make more money. See, that's that's the part that he's saying I need you to grab because that's so important because those ideas are very, very valuable right now. So I'm glad you kind of went into that vein. That's why I said the making of things. That stuff is powerful. I like handmade stuff, but 3D printing is awesome, too. In yeah. fact, 3D printing and medical, I said it. It's huge. Okay, go ahead. Now, I was just gonna say that's why it's important to uh, to do your market research. You know, yeah. we we see this daily. People will approach us with their ideas, and if if we can do a search in a minute for other companies that are already out there, that have, there's probably 25 that have come up with your ideas. Hey guys, like go out and just do a little bit of market research before you talk to potential people. You know, I mean, really, and that goes with forecasting and, and thinking about the future of how could I, you know, maybe get into this, like 3D printing. Software is a great area to focus in right now. Because there's not, it's hard to use the stuff right now. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Awesome, 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 awesome. What I want to do now is I want to kind of go into, there's two more questions that I'm going to ask. And one of the questions is more of an idea. And it's about the emergence of Tallahassee and what does that really, really mean? So I'm going to ask, and I'm going to ask both of you these questions. I want you to leave that nugget for the class. And then I'm going to ask another question that's kind of up close and personal. But let's start off with this one. The emergence of Tallahassee as a whole, what does that mean to you? Oh, I mean, it means more great restaurants and, uh, you know, more great people. Simple and um, I mean, it, it, you know, that's the vibe. Mm -hmm. You know, we live here. <clears throat> I mean, I hope, I mean, I love business and all that, but I hope that's not all it is. It's just, I, I just, I like the feel um, that, that, that this creates. Um, I think where entrepreneurs are accepted it's a it's a good it's a good thing and and to be clear that doesn't mean that if you're not an entrepreneur it's a bad thing 
Right. Okay. That, that's not what I mean. Um, but I think having that part of the ecosystem will enrich the community mm -hmm. uh, in ways that I think people don't even quite fathom. They're seeing little glimpses of it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for me, that's, that's really it. Because, you know, my kids, my youngest kid is uh, going to turn 14 in September. So I'm looking at kind of a five-year window. And, you know, my wife and I would actually like to kind of move downtown. You know, we'd like to live because we're out in Clorin Lakes and we'd like to move in more of an urban kind of thing. Well, that means there's got to be an, a place. <laughs> it's like when Midtown came. I meant Midtown between what? Um, you know, I exactly. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> um, and, uh, Who's ever asked that question? Yeah, but, but, I, but I will say this too about Tallahassee, you know, for, for all of you that are in the 99 other places. Um, you know, we got Trader Joe's and Whole Foods. And, um, and those guys have got some pretty ma amazing market research departments. They didn't put that here for charity. Mm, right. They saw something. And they talk about near future. They had built those not for today, although they're doing really well. They really built it for what they saw was coming tomorrow. So that's really an incredible validation of the path we're on. And it's really interesting. Like Whole Foods has the, uh, like the, the car chargers like sitting outside. I use it. You see, and the only reason why I bought the car I have is because they have the chargers. Isn't that interesting? Cool. That's cool stuff. Uh, you know, similarly, I just think, you know, what's what's better to move to an area that it already exists or to go to a place that is an open canvas to to do what you want? Yeah. Uh, since I've moved here, you know, I I coach and teach a lot of um, civic engagement and leadership. And the first thing I talk about is if you move into a community get involved in that community and do things that you would like to you know, see change. So for me, it's walkability in a community, it's the idea of community and not urban sprawl, um, and really you know, connecting the different areas. So I live in Midtown, and I would like to be able to connect with um, All Saints a little bit better. I want to be able to walk, um, even though not in the heat. The heat's pretty bad here. But, uh, <laughs> um, but you, know, you know, things that you're passionate about, go after those in your own community. and. And I think Tahasi is perfect for it. There's, you know, I've never been in a community where I could meet the people I did that quickly. Yep. And people are passionate about seeing change. And, and even you know, in a southern town like Tallahassee, people talk a lot about silos. Honestly, I haven't seen it. Um, I've met a lot of great people that live here and want to see changes. And, and they've been open to my ideas. And I'm not stepping over anybody's toes saying, you know, well, you're an idiot for these beliefs that you've had forever. No, it's worked for you. You loved it. I'm just asking if I could do this project. And people are. See the response. I love Tallahassee. My wife's getting her PhD, so we have the potential to move. Uh, but I hope that Tallahassee keeps me here, and I think um, we're on that path. Good stuff. So here's the intimate question. You all ready for this one? Because it's a good one. It's not that intimate. I'm, I don't want to scare you. The question is, and what, what I'm finding is the train has come. But anyway. It's Domi Station. It's, it's the station. So. In each entrepreneur that I've talked to, there's always been this event, this, this stroke, because we like to believe as entrepreneurs that it's all our grit and muscle and sweat that really gets us our success. But in each entrepreneur, there's always this glimmer of luck or this thing that happens that changes everything. It's in every entrepreneur. What is that thing in you and what is that thing in you, Micah, at the exact same time? What was the thing? Oh. <laughs> I think I was lucky to be told when I was 18 um, that uh, I would be the part of the first generation not to make as much money as my parents. Hmm. Um, and I remember, well, thanks. It's been awesome being at your school. Um, and, but, it, but it was, I think everybody should be told that at 18. Okay. You know what? You're not going to get to ride whatever ride your parents did and your grandparents did. You're going to have to make your own ride. Mm -hmm. And that made me an entrepreneur. Uh, for me, it made me go straight into entrepreneurship uh, rather than go down uh, the college path. Um, you know, when people look at Gates and Jobs dropping out of school, okay, understand there was nothing for them. There was nothing for them in school. At, at that point in the 70s, early 80s, they wanted to train you to be a middle manager. Middle manager of what? Everybody was shutting down. Everything was going overseas. I mean, it was no, there was no middle management. Wow. Um, so to me, that was the, the turning point where then at that moment I said, I'm going to have to do this myself. 
-hmm. and I felt like I had permission mm -hmm. because risk to me was it was actually riskier to go down the familiar trail mm. than where I went. Right. Even though I was told by many people, oh boy, this is bad, lots of relatives, very afraid. And by the way, when I'm asked today, would you stay in school? And absolutely. Are you kidding me to have, like for FSU and FAMU and TCC, a place like this right here? The fact that in my dorm room I've got Wi-Fi and all that? You're insane to leave. I'm not sure I would ever leave. I'll just stay in, <laughs> I'll just stay in college, you know, the, and, and just do businesses. But, <laughs> so, but, I, but I do think that, that that for me was... Was the, was the nugget. What about you, Michael? Uh, real quick with that comment. If you are a university student, take advantage of the resources that you have, really. Market research over there is phenomenal, the free services that you have. But you've got to reach out and you have to take advantage of them because it's hard to find. Um, for me, it was uh, I went to college with, uh, on an ROT scholarship, ROTC scholarship, and realized I didn't want to go to Iraq. And um, <laughs> I realized. And I was already, you know, I started businesses in high school and I always liked entrepreneurialism. I liked having my own money. I didn't want to rely on anyone else. Um, but in college, I literally had to pay my own bill out of state tuition at Indiana University. It was really expensive, so I had to create a company um, that I could fit around my schedule, and it kind of went from there. And then I just liked work more than I liked school, and I was in school for nine years, so <laughs> I finally got done. But uh, um, I just, you know, I enjoyed the, the idea of not being constricted into one thing, mm -hmm. and I could fall, you know, the ability to make your own way in life and not knowing what that might be, I just love the thrill of it. I think it's it's exhilarating. Okay, cool beans. How many people got a lot of great information out of this? Raise your hand, clap it up. See, you know the deal. Clap that up. I mean, these guys, I don't think they left anything on the table. Um, I think they came prepared to just leave it all right here on these seats, and I appreciate everything that you guys have talked about. What we're about to do now is transition to a different part of this conversation. It's where you actually have the opportunity to ask some questions of these guys and really kind of dig in. Is that cool with everybody? Clap it up if it's cool. And really, it really, it really don't matter if it's cool with you, it's cool, if it's cool with them, because y'all gonna be throwing the questions at them. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little bit differently this time, because sometimes it's hard to hear if you don't have a mic when you answer the question. So if you could raise your hand, we're gonna get a mic to you so you can ask your question, and we're gonna fire at these guys. We got Jesse back here. Let me get this mic to him. Thanks, guys. Um, just a question for both of you, e either of you can answer. What would you say is going to differentiate the successful companies from the failures specifically at Domi over the next few years? Good question. You want to take this? <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Are you going to get this one? Who got well, this? it's, it's going to be, uh, look, it, it's going to come down to execution. Um, because it isn't, it isn't the idea, you know, I look at, uh, I look at folks that are already doing great things. You look at Wes uh, with, with uh, the candy. Um, he's, he's just executed, worked his butt off, um, done what needed to be done. And even though he's got you know, candy, kind of that's a, a pretty old idea. And he repackaged it and is executing. Um, and so I think that's what's going to separate the winners you know, from those that don't win. Um, if you get at who's going to be the huge story, you know, who's going to one day be the Dell like they have in Austin, you know, you just, you never know. Um, uh, you know, if you looked at Facebook at the beginning, you know, if you watch that movie, you know, at the beginning it's a pretty stupid app. You know, it's just pictures of people and you rate them, you know, and it's pretty stupid and there was MySpace, Friendster, nobody was doing any of that stuff. So, you know, I don't think you would have guessed it at that moment. So we may have already seen the thing that will be our first thing to put our tan on the map. Um, but, uh, but in the end, it's going to be execution. I think it's also going to be the willpower. I think the willpower to be wrong and be willing to suck it up and do then the right thing. And, you know, because some people will keep doing the wrong thing so they don't have to admit that they did, you know, God, I've been so stupid up till now. Believe me, you know, guilty as charged. You know, I've done, so I mean now, you know, and fortunately I also have, I have a wife that's very smart and opinionated and will point out, hey, that's really dumb. <laughs> um, so that, that's been, that, that's very helpful uh, for me not repeating mistakes. But, 
But I would say that's it. I, I, and, it, and you know, no matter who that success story is, it's going to be a pretty good story if you were along for that ride and got to see and help them. Because ultimately, it's going to be a community that made them successful. Um, yeah. So that's you know the learning lessons you'll be able to learn from that will be incredible. Yeah, I think I think your ability. I I, I will say yeah. I think the team. That's back to my Muppet movie. I mean that. I know it sounds funny, but I mean it. You know, and it and if you watch how that all works, everyone gets their moment. Everyone gives their, get their moment. And you need to remember, everyone wants to be a hero of their story. Everybody wants to be a hero. And you should allow people on your team to be heroes, however those heroes are. And they're heroes that are, you know, the Mark Zuckerbergs. But for every Zuckerberg, there are a lot of people at Facebook who, without them, Mark wouldn't be there today. Um, and, you know, you, you need to remember that. You remember. Your ability to motivate a team and them to want to succeed is, it, it's crucial. It's, it's really, because it's funny though, it's really counterintuitive because being an entrepreneur, there's a little bit of narcissism. I mean, if you think about it, you sit there and, and you say to people, I'm going to change the world, <laughs> right? I mean, if you think of it, I mean, and you look at like Steve Jobs, he said, we're going to, I'm going to change the way computing is going to be done. Well, he failed. The Mac was a failure, okay? It was underpowered. It didn't, I mean, it, you know, there, there was not a race between the Mac and the PC, okay? Because the Mac was very pretty, couldn't do anything. PC was ugly, but could do something. And it's really, you know, the next time when he had his second chance, which by the way, the second time, if you, any of you have ever failed, the second time around, your probability of success is exponential. Exponential. So whenever I meet someone who comes, like if you say it, said to us, hey, I did a venture, but it didn't work out, that's a checkbox in the positive for us. Absolutely. Good. So I'm not going to have to tell you failure is an option. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you have another question? Yeah. Um, we're talking a lot about startup companies. and. Uh, I'd like to get your response to the idea of startup ideas uh, with the recognition that you talk about bringing all the teams together and getting all this started and getting insurance, all this stuff. There's a whole bunch of companies here in Tallahassee who already have all of that and would love to have someone who's got a new idea for how to expand into a new area, and you've got all that in place. Now, you've got to protect your idea, and maybe it's Jay Kiker and, and other lawyers, but do, do you have some way to help people kind of set up that relationship with an existing build, business that you can go in and take advantage of everything they've already set up, and you take your idea and go for it? Yeah, I think that leads into you know, your ability to create partnerships with those companies. So yeah, that is definitely something that we're going to be working on obviously through sponsors and that kind of thing. Like already, you know, I was on a conversation today, my community manager was Lucas, um, who talked to uh, Rackspace. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that crowd, but they have a mentorship piece as well. You can call up and ask them questions because they were a startup at one point. Um, so yes, you know, definitely taking advice from companies that already exist that do it. But I think there's a different mentality too. It depends on where they are. Yeah, I'm not talking about taking advice. I'm saying instead of hiring people and getting the building and getting insurance and getting, you know, a whole bunch of a board on the for corporation. All that's done by these folks and there's people who yeah, that's have what's, an idea where yeah. you become a partner in that business by bringing your idea. And that's, you, that's absolutely. Absolutely. But, it, you know, but that ultimately takes obviously the communication between to find those companies. That's hard to do. Um, so the more that those relationships come through. And then we've actually had a gentleman that has a uh, family business been in the family for 50 years in Thomasville. Just came to me last week and talked about he really wants to go into this other direction, but his dad's holding tight with the funds. He's like, you have recommendations for me. And so I gave him a list of things to do. And he ultimately wants to bring a team to that. Existing business, they have the infrastructure to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, um, but it's definitely a different mentality of trying to create a startup within a business that already exists because there are two different mind frames. There's, uh, you know, two different um, sets of, of things that you have to go through. And I think if you're, once you build a startup, like for example, like the, a lot of the teams that you see, like Cisco, for example, is a mom and pop business that was started. It gets to a place where it needs to sustain and you need to continue with those products and you know, continue to sell those. 
you might not be the best team for that to sustain a business. So it just depends on the company. It depends on the situation, but, um, but we're open to it. Well, and I think they, what that's called is intrapreneurship. And, and yes, the answer is yes. I mean, again, Domi is, we're looking for a way to say yes, not looking for a way to say no. So if a local business comes and says, you know what, I got this thing, but I can't put it all on red. I can't change what I'm doing, but I want to try this new kind of thing. Could you build a team around this? I'll give them the structure. I'll give them all the, the pieces, but then they run with that. It's kind of what's called a skunk operation, okay? We would love to set up skunk operations inside of existing businesses, because you're right, there's a safety in that. Um, yeah, be great. Uh, we're, we're all for it. We gotta, do, we gotta do everything, because we can't be choosy. We're a startup of a startup community. We gotta, I don't know where it will come from, where it's going to be, think, I, mean, I mean, think about it. If we had been here, whatever that was, 10, 15 years ago, you know, some woman would have walked through that door and said, I got this idea for underwear. You know, and she's a billionaire. You know, and I said to my partners when we first started this, I said, we have to have room so when she walks in that door, we go, really, show us that. Now, we got to be careful how we say that. <laughs> got to be careful. <laughs> True. <laughs> So it all, comes, it, all, it all comes back to liability. It all comes back to liability. Dave, you're just, Dave, it's all you're back to liability. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I was with, involved with Makerspace for the last three years, but it didn't, it's not going in the direction I thought it was going to go. Uh, if you're familiar with the OxyClean people, they have a, a show on TV called Pitchman. And they, uh, one of the guys died, Billy uh, something or other. But they had uh, brought in entrepreneurs and they went, took them up to New Jersey where they got all their you know, uh, mentors and uh, funding for building stuff. I'm not sure what they're actually doing in, in Tampa right now because the TV show has gone off the air. But uh, we had all the resources at the engineering school, but it kind of just sat around and did nothing. Uh, and so I'm wondering, uh, you didn't say what, what uh, companies you actually were involved with in building, but. I mean, Tallahassee, we haven't manufactured anything here except ammunition loaders and uh, Bradley sausage and a couple other little uh, things. But what, what type of manufacturing were you talking about? Well, there's about? actually a manufacturer um, up in Havana. Um, I mean, you'd be surprised yeah. at what is. Well, I know, I know what, you know, all the machinists and all these, you know, people that are building things. I mean, there's so much going on in YouTube now that you can get an education without going to school just watching YouTube. But the, the point is, the university is not doing what they're saying they're doing. You go to the, you know, some of these things that they've had at the Turnbull Center and everything to get all the pretty people together, but then in the background, there's really no a action going on. So well, part, in, in you're, you're right, you're right. But understand, they are doing more than you realize, but there's been no place for it to go. Mm. So in other words, you get this creativity burst, and then you just, so you study entrepreneurship or something, and then it's like goodbye. One of the big things that President Barron, before he left, said was our, the success of our graduates will be one of the measurements for our success. That is brand new kind of thinking for higher education. You were supposed to be taught how to learn and be a lifelong learner, and. And that was great, you know? My dad, when he got his degrees and first uh, person in his family to get a degree, that was wonderful. You know what, people want jobs. People want jobs, so they want to be successful. So I think what you're doing now is schools, and one of the reasons FSU is supporting us is because we become that place. So that person has that idea that fades away in the past, now they come here. And we give them that bridge to get over to now get them on. And, and we want to see manufacturing here. I mean, we're working with the county. You know, they got plenty. We're sitting in an economic zone. I mean, absolutely. And that means we're going to have to have machinists here. I mean, I know all those pieces. And it's hard. It's hard to think. Like, well, but it's not here. But it's not here because we're not putting this together. First, imagining that it's here. But putting those pieces together and having a place like us to think these parts together and bring other people. It will be here. 
It will be here. I, I, we, are, we are in such a wonderful, you know, I-10, the most boring road on the planet. Um, I mean, I, they can't make driverless cars fast enough. So, you know, I had somebody go, I don't know about a driverless car. I said, I go past driverless cars all the time on I-10, okay? And it's, <laughs> you know, exactly, exactly. But that's a logistics, I mean, that's, that's heaven, you know, that's heaven. You know what? And so, you know, what we got to do is you're right to, you're, you're right to criticize what was. But what I invite everybody to do is let's see what's happening here. Let's see if we can get a little kindling and let's blow on it and let's all come together and figure out how we get there because the motivation is there. Leon County, the city, FSU, FAMU, TCC knows. They cannot survive the way they have. The government is not going to write the check to grow Tallahassee. It is going to have to come from private industry. That is the only way. And that move right there is up to us. I mean, we believe. I'm out here. I don't care. You know, Because what? at the end of the day, I think all four of us would agree that if all this just falls down around us, then we're like, OK, the ground's a little higher for the next guy to build on top of, of Domi. I'm cool with that. My one comment to that too though, leads back to my uh, piece earlier with, you need to have leaders in the community that are gonna be here for the longevity. You can't just jump on a project and say, hey, we really want manufacturing here, and then not execute or you know, just you know, not show up to meetings and not drive you know, and, and pressure the government. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing to help do this X, Y, Z, what have you. Uh, it needs to be, a, and again, back to the collaboration, you know, we need to come together and do it as a, a whole to make sure it happens and then see it through. And I think that's with strategizing too. Like already, you know, as a CEO and someone that's strategizing, I'm thinking about down the road. We need wet lab space. We need other pieces. So like right now, I'm trying to strategically place myself within private companies that we can help get that here. And that's why we created a relationship with the government, why, with the universities, so that we position ourselves now to do that. And that's why I love make, uh, making awesome space. We have David coming next week to do a little talk. We need to support what's going on over there more because we're not set up to, to handle that kind of, those kind of pieces, but we need to make sure that stuff like that doesn't, doesn't fall off the wayside because that's great for education for our young people, but also the people that have great ideas. All right, you guys both talked about the emphasis on market research, and I wanted to see if you could give us a little bit more about the, maybe some specific tools to do some market research and the second part to my question would be, what would Mark Zuckerberg, that you used as an example, would have found if he would have done his market research? Maybe he would have found MySpace and Friendster and how to look beyond that. Yeah, well, I, I, I think first off, you know, that's 2004, I believe, four, 2004, 2005. Um, the amount of data, I'm in the big data business, that's been created since then. Okay, I, so first off, Mark would have been in a different world. Um, you know, Mark, if he looked, he, he had to see a couple of things. You know, Friendster and MySpace, okay, they were just a couple uh, in there. Google was the 201st search engine, okay, so they looked. If you're, for Mark, he just had to look and say, you know, MySpace was a dorm. And interestingly, so was he at the beginning. But he went, ooh, what if it wasn't a dorm? What if this wasn't just about college kids? Which is the, the magic piece that he did. And that people like me would be on Facebook. Which, by the way, that was a very embarrassing moment the other day when I was with one of the younger entrepreneurs and they wanted to look on Facebook. She said, are you on Facebook? I'm like, really? Really? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. I'm part of the graying of Facebook. Um, but you need to be looking at Gartner reports. You need to be looking at Forrester reports. Um, there's tremendous market research out there for free. Now, a lot of times it's a summary, but you're okay. But as Micah keeps trying to harp on here, if you're an FSU student, you have access to all that. It is sitting there, I know, in something called a library. I know, I know. It's like, that's part of the problem. It's like, if I can't Google it, it doesn't exist. Well, you know, no, I mean, here we are with, with, with Google, so uh, I better be careful here. Just so, just so we're clear, Googling a topic is not 
market research. Okay, that is not, and also by the way, be logged out of everything, Facebook, everything, or you will be in the bubble and all your search terms will come up the same. So I just want to tell you that, log out of everything. But you got to be doing Gartner. When we look at, because I can't tell you, I mean, what is it? 95% of the people who walk in this door have not done their homework. They tell us there are no competitors or there's not much. Mm -hmm. We go on, and frankly, all we have to do is go to Google, right? And we find it. So we're like, if I found it on page one of Google, Lord knows if I actually spent a few hours doing real market research. Um, so use the tools. Um, and, and, you know, if, and if you, don't have the, if you don't have the money or anything, the greatest resource you have is a phone you can pick up, your voice, call a university's market research you know, uh, person that, that understands it. Call someone that has that information, just ask, say, hey, I'm a startup. I don't have a lot of money for these services. Do you recommend anything? Uh, you know, your, the ability for you to sell yourself and what you're working on is crucial. So don't be afraid to pick up the phone and, and talk to someone that might know. You know I would say that. And I have a bunch of resources if you want to email me, I'll shoot them to you. And that, that's another thing in case we don't get the question. Talk to customers. Please, please, please start. I mean, the people who are going to buy your product are going to tell you why they're not going to buy your product. The most valuable thing in the world they can tell you. You know what? I've already got that covered or it would cost me too much money, or my company demands I only buy from X, whatever they may say to you. You need to go out there and do 100 customer interviews before you start banging any code. Because the problem is the more time you spend without having talked to customers, building your business, the harder it will be for us to tell you you went the wrong way. Because what I hear then is, but I've spent so much time, but I've spent so much money. So in other words, you're going the wrong way, but you'd rather continue going the wrong way than turning around. And I'd rather you not have even started the journey. And that's hard, it's really hard, because guess what some of those people are gonna say to you, like if Mark had gone out and talked to people about you know, customers, right? He could have heard from a lot of people, I'm not on social network. Right, especially as you got older people. That's just for kids, or it's music on MySpace, or friends. It would, you know. So, but he would have listened. Okay, now I know why you're not on there. So now I'm going to build what he ultimately built, because I know you are social. So he learned, but he just threw it out there and then got that feedback. But you understand that the negative things you get can then help you craft the product. So it's not about stopping you, and maybe that'll get you guys out there. It's, Similar when you go out and sell a new product or what have you, you know, you need to find their hot buttons, you know, the fact find first. Go out and ask them, is this a problem that you have? Yeah. And go ask, you know, 150 people if you have the same problem. But, you know, the questions are extremely important of what you ask. You don't have to necessarily say what you're doing. Just go out and ask questions to lead to, you know, then going back to them and say, hey, if, you know, I solved this, this, and this for you. Is this something you'd like? And, you know, show them what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, my new company with Big Data, I identified the problem first and I sell to the problem. So I get them to agree, yeah, that's a problem. And here's how I'm gonna solve it. As opposed to me coming and saying, wow, isn't this amazing what I'm doing? And then I hope this solves something for you. <laughs> I hope this solves something for you. Another question. Hi, I'm William McCluskey. I'm the founder of Proper Channel. Um, I'm a recent transplant from Cambridge. Uh, what are the first three things I should do to plug into the startup community here in Tallahassee? Uh, you've done one. You came here. <laughs> you only have two left. <laughs> <laughs> you got two left. Um, you know, two, I would say that, um, you know, the, the networking resources that you do have to connect to the right people um, are extremely important. So, you know, the, the chamber is a great resource here. And if you use the resources in the right manner, um, they can introduce you to the right people. So, like, for, for example, the chamber conference is coming out in August. For a town like Tallahassee, a chamber is extremely important if you want to meet the right people to get connected. Um, and then, you know, find startups that are out there that are in the woodwork, which we're helping to bring out in the forefront, um, that have built a successful company here. They're your best resource. And definitely come to future events. Yeah. How do I find them? Um, we do a meetup. Um, and we have a newsletter called Domi Dispatch. 
Um, you can get on our mailing list and all Get that. on our website at dummyventures.co and uh, sign up for our newsletter. We have our event calendar. And then stop by any time, too, and just we're open for coffee and okay. ping pong, too, sometimes. USA Soccer. What's that? USA Soccer. USA Soccer tomorrow. Yep. We'll be streaming that in here. Uh, so my question is, have you ever thought about reaching an even younger generation? I'm saying um, high schoolers. For example, when I was about 12, I kind of had my own business. I was like drawing all these like little machines and putting prices on them. And no one was there to be like, hey, <laughs> I see where he's going, you know? And there's a lot of schools here that are connected with colleges. So you already have kind of a, they're there. And, um, you know, have you, ever, have you ever thought about that, integrating that into what's going on here? Yep. Or absolutely. would that be a separate? Thing nope, no, no, we're okay. that's in the, the the mindset too. You know, ultimately we want those people to come out to events, see some companies that are they're um, getting incorporated. We've already been reached out by groups like the uh, professional partnership with the middle schoolers to to come out to events, and we're now we're regularly working with those folks. There's a young lady, two of the young ladies are starting MoLab, which is like a STEM on wheels project. Fascinating. If you guys um, don't know, uh, look it up. Um, contact me, and I'll connect you with her. But she's doing some incredible things to get in and, and do some activities. But I think that's extremely important for them to know, kind of in the wave of the future, um, to navigate their own life and build a company. Absolutely. Well, I think and, it's a, and you guys are doing the Massive Academy. Exactly. Yeah, and, Ryan. Yeah, I was going to talk a little bit about that because just like you identified that as a problem, because what we have is a huge economic shift as a whole, period. And so what we identified at Massive Corporation early on is that that though we operate a lot in the college level and those who are actually trying to pursue entrepreneurship, I think really the seed needs to be planted at a much earlier age. So we actually go as far as down as elementary all the way up through, it's all K-12, and we have what's called Creators Camp. And what we do is we actually start introducing them to the whole creative confidence piece and really, really pulling out what the school system tends to kind of push out over time we really help fortify that and help them understand that the creativity that they have is really, really important moving forward. So we're doing a lot of that. So we have Creators Camp, we also have Massive Academy that's on deck right now, and Founders Camp. So there's a lot of stuff that we're doing for that generation. How do, folks, a, how do folks find out about that information for you guys? For us, you can go to, right now we're on Twitter, we're moving things really, really big on Twitter because of course we're in that design mode. We're actually prototyping with FAMU right, how did I get, like start getting interviewed? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can actually get on Massive um, Academy is out there, um, Creators Camp. Um, it'll start, it'll come out this week because we're in the prototype stage with FAMU right now. We have a group of, what, 42 kids right now that we're, that we're with. Um, but our information is rolling out relatively quickly, um, and we're going to scale Creators Camp. It's going to be pretty awesome. Um, so, yes, that's a huge question. I'm passionate about that. You right there in my lane. Um, and so, and we'll integrate again with Domi. We'll use the community as a whole to bring these pieces together because it's all part of it. Yeah, one of, one of the things that's really important to understand about an, uh, a really successful ecosystem, at the ecosystem level, it's not competition. It's all cooperation because people are going to move within it. Uh, once you get to the company level, we will, I'm sure we'll have things that are competitive. But at the ecosystem, it's got to be, and this is true even in mature places, you see very few... Uh, investors go it alone anymore. They do what's called syndicate their investments. So more and more it's a very collaborative experience. So we're hoping to find like you as a 12 year old, you know, that because they're 12 year olds who've made <laughs> successful businesses. You know, there was what the recent kid was he 16 or 17 sold his app to Yahoo for like 15 million bucks. You know, you're welcome. Come on here. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah our, our partner in Atlanta just invested in a young man that's 17 years old, gave him $2 million um, that started a business. So, yeah. so it's happening. We're not, we're not ignoring the, the young troopers. Here, let me shoot over here. I mean, just while we're on that topic, um, in terms of like, because I'm all about, you know, the, the blank canvas. Um, you know, creating, be a big fish in a small pond and, and you know, um, building Tallahassee from the ground up. And I love the way, you know, that we're working together as a community to do that. But I also, we always talk about body snatching and, and framing it so that we are taking people and, you know, even if they're deciding to go to FSU 
over UF or over, you know, uh, another, another college. Um, have y'all thought about that at all in terms of like um, ways we can frame it so that we, we change people's decisions to create Tallahassee as a destination um, and help um, expedite the process, I guess? Yeah, you know, I, I think, um, you know, something we're focused on is having that consistent story that we're telling. So like we're, we're writing in, um, my community manager's writing in four national blogs um, and telling that story. So talking about all the entrepreneurial uh, movements that are going on here, telling that story, uh, letting people know, hey, you can do it here. We have all the right pieces, I think is important. Knowing that not everybody's gonna wanna stay here. So I mean, really, honestly, a, a good success story though too is if we could train some people that might move away for a couple years to work for a really good company, get that experience, they'll remember who helped them get that training and come back to Tassie to make it a more um, dynamic place. So, and, and we are starting to get on the orientation tours. You know, I, to me, my background, I've been a social entrepreneur for all my career. So even though big data, I focus on higher ed, nonprofits, healthcare. Um, so I understand fundraising. And uh, my wife used to be at the FSU Foundation. Um, you know, we want to be on that tour, mm -hmm. right? And because if I'm in admissions and I've got that kid and it's UF or here, right? Now UF isn't gonna be able to show their incubator and say, well, they don't have one, okay? So now we're getting on a little more equal playing field and we're back to deciding what's the best school for you, which still might be UF. And, but that's the competition side. But I also wanna say, you know, Florida is important too. So like we just had a hack FSU and we had UF kids there, we had FIU. Miami. So I know Miami, so yeah, I mean, believe me, you know, I've, I've become a Noel fan and, and all that, but I, I, I just, we need to also be cooperative within the state um, while also retaining local pride. Uh, the other thing I've noticed is there are a lot of gators in this town. Uh, so I know, I heard a clap, I knew that would bring out. She started clapping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just a question for those of us that have been here. I've been here 14 years, and what do you see as one or two collaborative or continual improvement things that we can do for the community as a whole? Because I've been to a lot of the chamber events where last year there were 400 people in a room in Amelia Island, and a lot of good vibes coming up. But same message, you know, first time in 25 years that things are, so what, just a handful of things, where are the areas that those of us that are out in the community can be tapping and, you know, and strengthen what we've already got going? Um, I, th I think first and foremost, you know, showing up to events that are out there. I think a great platform that um, has been showcased recently is Meetup, and that's how we got started. We started out in August and had 35 people out to our first Meetup because we ultimately wanted to see if there was a need in the community. So I think going out to those, a spinoff of ours, now there's three other meetup groups that have started, very spe specific niche um, meetups, where you can get, you know, if you wanna go and, and participate with the Making Awesome space, to know that it's out there, to reach out to the people that do know that those things are out there. And that's, that's one of the things that we're trying to create is again with that front door approach. If you come in and you wanna work on XYZ, well, you know, it might be good for you to start in the EEP program with Larry Lynch over at the EDC, or you know, if you're you know a young person that you know needs to go and um, go through the creative camp, we need to push people to that. You need to go learn lines of code and some stuff that Ryan's doing. On top of that, we need to push that. Uh, you know, we're going to be doing some educational things in here. Kind of what do you you know what do you want to see again? It kind of in lines, and then team up with people that are like-minded that want to see change, and uh, and get the support that you need uh, behind it. One of my uh, goals here soon is to have a kind of a site and a platform so we can put a face to those people and the leaders. Um, so you can reach out to them with a click of a button. You don't have to come here even, you know, you can connect with them and we'll do some specific events to help promote that energy and, and to make it inclusive, I think is, uh, is important. Well, I think, you know, the other thing, and, and I just caution everybody, you know, um, my oldest son's a surfer, so that's how I, I only know this, you know, that, you know, when you're in the wave, if you start noticing the wave, then you're going to fall, okay? So part of it is we're in the wave. You know, it's happening. It is happening around you. So what you need to do is figure out what's, where are those places your expertise? Is there a startup that some knowledge that you have could help that startup? Help them. Um, if, you know, if, if you were an investor, invest in them. 
Um, if you could teach something, teach it, okay? Get involved in that. It's happening, right? And, it, and it's hard. Bill Gates said it really well. You know, we overestimate the future in the short term and we underestimate it in the long term. I believe we're in the long term for Tallahassee's turn to entrepreneurship. And so that means a lot of people sit there and go, oh, it'll never happen, and the city will never get along with the county, and the county will never get along with FSU, and FSU will never get along with FAMU. You know, and all these things, it's like, you know what? Where we're all meeting is we're all just people. I mean, look, we, we're allowing a gator in the room. We're all good. <laughs> um, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so no, 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 it's old thinking. I would, uh, I would also comment too, like, you know, if, if, you have a, if you have a great idea, don't wait for approval to, to do it. Just, you know, like, ask for forgiveness later. Just do it. Just do it. I think one of the, and if I can piggyback on that, there's, at Massive Corporation, we are a social innovation company, so we're looking at ways to actually start, like, really putting some of these things together. So we're doing a big project right now called 60DF or 60 Days Forever, which is a big child obesity thing. But you have a lot of organizations out there that are trying to do the exact same thing. We don't ignore that. We go get them, we round them all up, put them in a room and say, let's launch this really big thing that's really, really awesome, do really big work and make it matter. And then that goes out as a message from Tallahassee to say, we get stuff done. So it's some of that as well. So if you see disjointed parts that could do really big work together, put those parts together and that becomes a startup. That becomes a whole initiative that you can champion, and it gives more credibility and strength to the city, if that helps answer your question a little bit. I think, you'll be I think you'd be surprised if you look at the history of the cities that have made this transition. Um, they, we have a lot, of, a lot of that going on right now. And I think if somebody from Austin who'd lived there a long time came here, they'd go, this looks familiar. This looks familiar. You know, I remember when, and it, and it is, it's new. It, we are at definitely a moment where we could go back or we could go forward, right? You know, no question. But what, what, we, what we commit to is our entrepreneurial energy and Vincent, everybody, we're here. We're not going anywhere. You know, we, we are going to put everything we have into this to make this successful. And if we hope people will join us, but if they don't join us, we're going to do it anyway. If the county hadn't given us this building, we would have found another building, okay? But we're very grateful that they did that. If FSU hadn't supported us, we would have gone another way. It would have made it a different path. We're glad they did. But at no point are we, because we're entrepreneurs, going to be stopped by someone telling us no or I'm not go I don't think that's right. Well, good for you, and you don't need to join, but we're going because we can't stop. You understand that where we are, if we stop and have a committee meeting and wonder if all this is going well and is every company here perfect and is every meeting perfect, if we do that, whoosh, we collapse. We have to keep going. And we hope all of you, you know, coming out tonight and spending this kind of time, you know, we, what we want to share is we're in it. We love that you're here. This really will be lonely if it's only the four of us. <laughs> but you know what? If it's only the four of us and Catalina Coffee and uh, Grasslands Brewery, we will make a party out of it. We'll be, um. All right. Thank, thanks for hosting this. Um, I want to go back a little bit to the market research. If you have an idea that's maybe ahead of the curve or you think they could be a disruptor to an industry, what type of sources do you suggest for doing market research about the viability of that? Well, as much as I kicked Google, you know, first thing you want to do that, get out of the bubble and just sort of do and figure out the industry, right? So you know where you're going to start with the industry association mm -hmm. and go old school, right. okay? Um, you know, my first company, our library was the Library of Congress. And so it really taught me a lesson about being able to get at. So just get real basic. What is the industry? Go to the industry association. Who are the experts? Um, talk to the people who are already talking. I love to look at like, you know, the thought leaders, like I present all the time. So if anybody wants to know about my space that's smart, they link to me on LinkedIn. They drop me an email. And 
it, it's definitely a sign of IQ. I don't mean that I'm any, I, within this little world I have, I know a lot. Right. So if you want to come in my world, you ought to talk to me. There are people like me in every industry. Find those people. And you know what? Most of them are decent people who will talk to you and go, hey, that 100 people have that idea. Or, hmm, yeah, you're right. That's a real problem in the industry. I think finding the people that, you know, like, I don't necessarily believe in, you know, NDA agreements, depending on what industry you're getting into. Um, you know, reach out to the people that really want to help mentor you and that have knowledge of potential disruption in that industry. So, for example, like our partner, John Vecchio, sees like a thousand deals, um, you know, a month. Uh, he has a lot of insight having that venture arm where he can reach out to his contact at Google Ventures and say, you know, what do you potentially think? Um, he has those contacts though that won't give out that information. Um, so finding the right people, and that's hard to do. I mean, you definitely have to have a, a network of, of those people, but that's what I would recommend. Another Reach out thing to the that people. if I could throw in to what these guys are saying, there's also, we have a local futurist. There is a futurist here local, but there's futurists all over the place. And futurists, these are guys that obsess, guys and, and women who obsess over looking at future trends, what's coming, what's going to affect us down the line. Get with those guys so they can kind of give you a foresight on what might be coming and gives you some type of, of a reference point to say, yeah, this thing is going to be hot like three years from now, so I'm going to start working now. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's a, that's a really when good a lot of A lot of those great... Uh, what's his name? Simon. And he does, and he does a lot of. Is he a future? Future? <laughs> future? No, Simon goes out there. My, he sails out. <laughs> my last comment about um, you know disruption too is you kind of I'm, essentially you might know because you've worked in that industry. So for example, like the relay rides that I spoke of, they saw a problem, but they are also team members had worked within the rental car industry. Right. To know that, hey, you know, this is an evolution, and, and what happened before that zip car paved the way for the peer-to-peer. -peer. Can I ask one more question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so say if I've worked in that industry and I see that as a disruptor, how do I, if I'm going to approach someone like y'all, how do I prove that to you? Just providing the research. Go on our site and apply, and you'll see we ask you some questions, and then that gets piques our interest. We have you come in. We pretty much, you know, we talk to everybody, right. and uh, you know, we'll ask the hard questions. But you know, one mistake entrepreneurs make is they think there's a wrong answer. Don't, don't try to anticipate. I mean, if you think about it, like Google, they, the best ideas, there's just a good article about this, some of the best ideas have the hardest time getting funding. Because people turn down Google. You know, Excite could have bought them for nothing. But they're like, why? <laughs> you know, why should I do that? Because no one had thought that that algorithm, that link, would matter, and that was their little moment. We're, we're more interested too in the individual, so if you come in with a really good idea that might need some tweaking or something, you know, ultimately we're after your passion and what you have and what you bring, and you've, you've come to the table, I've already done some market research, or you've thought about things in a, in a way of, um, you know, that, that's, that makes sense, yeah. and that you're, ultimate, you're, you're open for suggestions and, and for us to look into it and help you. Yeah, and that's who we want to work. With. That's who we want to work with. Want to be clear? It's not about not finding your idea, okay? Because let me tell you, if you really are an inventor, you are going to have that. good luck. Good luck. If you really are inventing something totally new, the odds are you will fail. The odds are your idea will be stolen. The odds are, I mean, I can't tell you, think about, or, or the odds are you will, I mean, think about the poor guy that Bill Gates bought the operating system from, okay, to sell to IBM, right? I mean, that guy did so much work, but he just wasn't in the right kind of thing. So if you're coming up with a totally new idea, I'd much rather see an idea that I see some pieces and, and disruptors, right? So, you know, like software as a service. Software wasn't new, but delivering it via the cloud. So suddenly you could remake every single application, right? Gaming on the web versus a cartridge took away, so a Zynga kind of idea. Rental, because if you look at it one time, if you go to Google and put in rental cars, lots of things are going to come up, right? So you'd never do this relay business. But then if you put in there, rent your own car, now all of a sudden, a dearth of that. So that's, I want to be careful when we say market research, it's not about not finding your idea. 
<laughs> if, now, I, we still want to talk to you if you've seen a vision of, you know, something, but those are, it's just hard because then you've got to convince people to do something completely different. You know, you think about like, you know, TVs in the beginning. You had to convince people to, believe it or not, sit around in a room and watch a box. Why would I do that? I like playing outdoors. No, Jimmy, don't play outdoors. Come in and watch this box, okay? And then one day there'll be a box everywhere and one day you'll be able to you know, carry the box, right? But you know, they didn't sell a lot of TVs in the 50s, you know? So, I, I mean, that's... I know, is it shaped like a stick, right? Another perspective. I just wanted to, do, it's just sharing some insight, um, expanding from what you already had said, and it was two things. And one is, as far as like ideas go, um, art critic by the name of Dave Hickey had said, you know, when you look at contemporary art, a lot of people are like, wow, you know, they just don't really understand it. But the theory that what he had pointed out was that it's, most people do not recognize new until it's already old. Because it's so new, you don't put the pieces together to say, that's just, don't, it's like, no, that's just weird, that's wrong. But, so that was one. And then the other thing that I wanted to point out, I just got, um, I'm from Las Vegas, and I um, went and visited my hometown, hadn't been there for like about seven years. My son lives there. And so one of the things I did see is that I went to the downtown area of Fremont Street. Fremont Street has been encapsulated. They tried to enshrine it, and it just was a, it just was a very bad idea because what it did was that it stagnated everything else around it. It just became just a, just a very dangerous place. Then Zappos, your buddy, moved in, and he actually, his headquarters is, are, are located in, um, he bought the, um, he bought a, what, a City Hall. His headquarters are located in City Hall, right off of um, Fremont Street. Now, believe it or not, as, as successful as he is, he cannot figure out, he's having a hard time making entrance into the community of Las Vegas. So when you think about like change and how you know people, can this community change? Can we get on a wave? I say yes, because this is what he is doing. He's still not in it. But what is happening is that he's buying all the properties around Fremont Street, and you can bet he's gonna come up with something good. And also, he's, um, he has incubator area that's been created out of boxcars, or like how they wanted to do in the art district, they, they're, they're kind of like box freight cars or whatever. So he has an incubator, and you, there's a lot of people that are into games, into game development, and they're walking around with Google Glass. So it seems to be a mecca of draw with people. Well, and that's that part that of what you're going to start to see is it's 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 that transformation of the environment is part of what you're seeing. So to the question earlier about what can you do, part of it is to patronize the you know the the establishments, right? That are coming is come to new parts of town, do things you didn't do before. Um, that's huge because these people need your support. You know that Merv's melt shop across the street. As that, that's amazing. That's like the best first venue I've ever seen. I, if you had told me that was a national franchise, I'd have believed you. <laughs> and, but you know, that's a guy who owned Canopy Road Cafe, which was, is actually a pretty, you know, just kind of a, you know, nothing. Fa I mean, it's the opposite of Merv's. I mean, I love Canopy Road. It was very sad when they closed one of their locations. But the point is, we got to be there. You know, I told the county, we need right over here, we need one of those safe walkways to get across because we need up to all saints you know and that's part of our job is to communicate with the county what's needed with the city to coordinate um but you know i, I appreciate um you know this I, I this you know when we when we imagine all of this um our success will ultimately be measured by how successful the entrepreneurs are it will have nothing to do with our personal success. And, you know, to say that we started Domi as a money-making business, you don't understand an incubator. Okay, you don't, you don't understand this. Um, this. This is really an investment in a community and that, you know, we, we, you know, what I look forward to down the road is when I'm, at, you know, maybe down at Seaside vacationing or something and telling somebody about, well, you know, that business 
came into Domi wow. a number of years ago, and here's, I can tell you that story. And that's, that's really, to me, that'll be enough, even if I personally made nothing on that. Because that's, and that's what you gotta do, that give first. You know how I met the person who introduced us all? I was a judge at the Entrepreneurial Boot Camp for Disabled Veterans, which is an amazing place. And, you know, talk about, I gotta be a judge of someone who's served, you know, my country, who's injured, and I'm supposed to say, yeah, but your idea is really bad. You know, <laughs> that was, really, no. Um, but that was a give first. I mean, I, you know, I had no economic reason to be there. That was just, but out of that experience, we wouldn't be here today had I not made connections there. Mm -hmm. And so that's the other thing I'll tell you all. While I want you to focus on your businesses, also focus on your community. Give out to everybody. You'll be amazed at what comes back to you. Um, you know, true people who give can never give it away because mm. it all comes back to them. The only people who are poor are misers. Those are the people who live every day afraid. Givers are never afraid. That's powerful. I think we can close Startup so. Grind on that right there. Check it up. This is Startup Grind. Wow. Wow. That was high five on that. That was high five right there. That, that is like the whole spirit of Startup Grind. And tonight was a phenomenon. Who agrees tonight was phenomenal? Clap it up. Clap it up. We do Startup Grind every month, and we've, we've started to partner up with Dami to say this is the location where the grind is going to go down. So each month, we'll be looking forward to seeing a new startup, a new face, a new story, a new revelation, new insight, new information that will inspire you to take your startup to the next level. So I hope to see everybody at the next Startup Grind. Appreciate you for coming out. Let's give Maurice a round of applause for the Catalina <laughs> Cafe, always serving it up. And give yourself a round of applause for being awesome. That's it. See you next time at the Startup Grind.